Hi, welcome back to the ANS Way. Today I'm going to start by saying out of pocket, deductibles, HMO, PPO. What do all these terms mean? This video I'm going to start to explain to you how medical insurance plans work in the USA because I understand that a few of you are moving to the US or already in the US and probably trying to get your head around all these very confusing terms. Now originally I thought I could do this in one video and as I started to write my notes and work out how best to explain to you how insurance plans work here, I realized that's just not possible. It was going to be a super long video. So I've decided to break this into a video series and this video is going to be an introduction. An introduction into the very, very basics of the US health system and why you need medical insurance here. The next video will then go into more details around how to pick a plan, uh, the definitions of all the terms you're looking at, what it means, and then the final video should be around how you pay for your medical insurance here and how you can also be a bit more savvy with preparing for your medical bills in the USA. I will start by saying please bear with me because I am still learning, me and Anne are still learning. I would say I probably know a bit more than Anne at the moment and I'm educating him. So this, putting this together was actually a real good uh, test for myself of what I currently understand. And the other thing to note is that we both come from the UK where we have the National Health Service. So our understanding of healthcare systems, how we've been brought up has been very much been based on the fact we've been brought up in the UK. Therefore, the, I would say the US is the polar opposite and the polar opposite in terms of how complex it is. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. We are a really small channel and your subscriptions really help us and don't forget to hit that like button. We are currently learning so much as we settle in the US and we really want to get our videos out there to help more people. So please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. What is health insurance and why do you need it in the USA? Well, the first thing to point out is that there is not a universal healthcare system in the USA. And what do I mean by that? Well, if we compare it to the UK, in the UK, we have the National Health Service, the NHS that is free at the point of care. And I stress this because often people say that the NHS is free. It is not. Taxpayers fund that service. If you work, you are contributing towards the NHS. It just means that whenever you go to see your GP or the hospital, you're not paying at that point. Now, if you don't work, you could argue that the NHS is free because if you don't work, you've never contributed, then yes, of course, the NHS is free. But it does mean that there is a standardized level of care to everyone. It's a fair system in that sense that irrespective of how wealthy you are or how poor, you can guarantee that you're going to get a decent level of healthcare service in the UK. And that's what people generally love. Now, the more you earn, the more taxes you pay, and you will hear and talk a lot about this, which means with more tax, you pay more towards the NHS. And that's irrespective of how you're using it. And it doesn't mean that you get a quicker service or you get a better service at all. It's just a system where we contribute, taxes payers contribute, and then there's a system for all. It's a very simple system. There, it comes out of your pay, and it's that's it. That's the UK done, and I share that just to give a perspective on the comparison, certainly from our perspective when going to the USA. Now, back to the USA. In the USA, I mentioned there isn't this universal healthcare system. When you, t when you have any service, um, whether you're going in for emergency care, seeing your doctor, you have to pay for that service. Somebody has to pay for the service. And that is the point where it's very different to the NHS, which means typically here in the US, you need insurance. And that can be funded by yourself privately, or more commonly via your employer. Slight random fact, as I was educating myself about medical insurance in the US, I also found out that about 10% of the population in the US are not insured um, due to various reasons, but the main one being that they're unemployed and that they do not get, therefore do not get insurance by their employer, but 
to also pay for themselves, it's just too expensive. So when they weigh up the balance of the risk versus how much they can afford, they simply have to go with the option of no medical insurance. So apparently in 2019, the statistic says 10% do not have insurance. As an FYI, there are two government funded programs in the USA, Medicaid, Medi Medicare and Medicaid, and that covers the elderly, disabled and poor. I'm not entirely sure how they quantify anyone that's poor or how you qualify to get Medicare in, in the US. It's not something I've looked into, but just to share that information. And out of my pay every month, I have a small contribution that goes towards Medicare. If you're watching this and you're from the US, you might have picked up that I may have switched around Medicare and Medicaid. So Medicare is for elderly and disabled, I believe, and Medicaid is for considered for poor. Now you will notice that I use that term poor, and that is not a term I would typically choose to use. Um, in the UK, we would refer to say low income, but there is a reason why I've chosen that word specifically. When I was looking up how the system is here in the US, I never saw reference to low income or, lo or low social economic, um, how you live. There was no reference to that. The term specifically used was poor, and it makes me wonder that that's, and that's why I also couldn't explain to you how they define that here. So when they're saying they're giving Medicaid to certain groups of poor, and that, that is literally how it was written when I was searching for it, there is no real definition. And in the UK, we have the concept of your household income. And it's not a term that I'm seeing here, so just giving an explanation of as to why I've used poor as opposed to another term. For you guys that are moving here to the US, I'm simply just stressing, you need a health insurance plan when you come here. And it can be confusing, but do not worry, I'm here to help you somewhat, and we can learn together. And really, the idea behind the plan is to make sure that you do not have any unforeseen medical expenses. I've heard many horror stories about people landing with a huge medical bill and that's exactly what you want to avoid. I want to add, medical care is not necessarily more expensive here in the US. That is a common misconception. Medical services and care has a cost no matter where you go, even in the UK. It's just in the UK we are less aware of how much that treatment costs because we never see the bill. Because it's free at point of care, we have no idea how much it costs to go and see our GP, if we get an x-ray, if we get treatment. We don't see those costs. In the US, you are far more aware of it. The other thing I would add, it may not be necessarily cheaper in the UK depending on how much tax you pay. Now, in my case, I have certainly learned that because of my tax contribution in the UK, it is actually more expensive for me to cover myself for health care in the UK than it is in the US. I will caveat what I've just said, and I'm going to caveat that with, I'm not talking about when service, the cost of the service is inflated or fraudulently added to your bill. And I am aware that this can happen when you do have a system like the US. I am assuming that the costs are fair um, and honest. Once I've had more experience of living here in the US and the healthcare system, I will also do a video on comparing the level of service that you get here versus the UK. What I can say already, in the UK it's fairly standard, um, but it can be a postcode lottery on the level and quality of treatment that you get in the UK. I used to go around the UK training different people on equipment, with medical equipment, and I personally saw the disparity in the level of care that you would get from the south of England to the north of England. The other aspect is that you are you are restricted to what the NHS will provide. So it's their treatments, their prescriptions, which is why sometimes you hear these stories about other people going abroad to get treatment because they are not covered by the NHS. In the US, there is far more flexibility. And when I say far more flexibility, that comes with a very bad side in that your level of service and treatment can be terrible and awful to the most premium. Pretty much my understanding is you get what you pay for here. 
but then there's more flexibility and more available treatments here. So <laughs> pros and cons of both. The other aspect is waiting times. My niece is currently waiting weeks in the UK simply to get a blood test. Not even resolve her issue, just the blood test. And I'm fairly confident that's not an issue here. If you haven't guessed it already, healthcare is something that I'm personally passionate about. I work for a med tech company. I used to work in the NHS. So it is truly something that I care about and why I, you may find that I have quite strong opinions when it comes to it. And I'm always trying to assess and learn really what is the best way and I, I don't know if any country has got it right um, but I like to be open-minded. Anyway, rant over about the NHS, let's get back to you in the US and picking your medical plan. So how do you pick the right medical plan? In this video I'm not going to go into a lot of detail around all the definitions in terms, I'm going to save that for the next video, uh, but what I will start to cover here is just some assumptions. My first assumption is that you are getting your insurance by via your employer. Um, simply because that's the only advice I can give because that's what I'm going through. I've not got a private um, insurance for myself. But I would imagine that the logic that you go through when picking your plan is fairly similar, whether it's provided via your employer or you're having to pick it for yourself. Out of curiosity, I searched online just to see how much a health plan would be for me and Anne if we had to get it ourselves. Currently we pay around $200 a month for our plan and when I looked, the cheapest I could find was about $500 a month and the plan was not comparable at all. The deductible, the total costs involved were far, far higher for that plan. To get something a bit closer to what I'm being offered via my work, it would have cost closer to $1,000 per month. So just to get the idea of how significantly more expensive it is um, to get it yourself. What medical plan you have available will be dependent on what your employer offers. For me, I spoke to colleagues. I also spoke to the benefits person at my work and also just other people that have immigrated, immigrated to the USA just to get their perspective. Uh, so I do recommend that you go and speak to colleagues just to get their advice on the plan they picked and why they picked that particular plan. In our case, at my company, we had two plans available for us. And the two plans were, that were available were based on the fact that we live in Nevada. One plan is a plan that's available to all employees irrespective of which state you're in and the other plan was a, a plan that only people that live in Nevada have available. This is my first time of working in the USA so I don't know if having a choice of plan is considered normal in the, in the US. Um, actually for you guys watching this you tell me whether that's normal uh, having a choice of plans from your um, employer. So now you're at the point that I was at, um, I've got two plans, how do I pick? And essentially there are two main things that you need to consider when choosing your plan. The first thing is the total costs involved with your plan. Your total costs are made up of number one, your premium. So that is the amount that comes out of your pay each pay slip. And that is subsidized by your employer. So in my case, I'm paying about $97 for me and Ant because I'm covering myself and a dependent in my health plan. But that's not all. I also need to consider the deductibles on the plan, the out-of-pocket maximum, and then the co-pays and co-insurance that may be involved, right? So when I'm looking at what plan I'm picking, number one, what are the total costs? premium, deductibles, out-of-pocket, co-pays, co-insurance. Are you confused yet? <laughs> the next part of the plan that, well, part of understanding which plan to pick is the type of plan it is. And this is where we come into whether it is a health maintenance organisation plan, HMO, or a PPO, preferred provider organisation. And you can tell I'm even I'm at, as I'm saying this, I'm having to think. And the type of plan, whether it's a HMO or a PPO, determines 
your network coverage. So that's kind of like the service you're getting with the plan, whether you have to be in network or whether you can go out of network. And then the process of getting, of going to see a specialist as an example. Now, are you even more confused? <laughs> but fear not, because in my next video, I promise I will explain what I mean by all those terms, what a deductible is, what an out-of-pocket means, and what's the difference between an HMO and a PPO. That is it for this video. I hope you found that really useful. I really wanted to just share the real basics of the healthcare system before we get into the real detail. I know I mentioned a lot of confusing terms, but do not worry, I will cover that in the next video. If you found this really useful, please do subscribe if you haven't already. Give me a thumbs up as well, I really appreciate it. Also comment below, let me know what you found useful. Is there any, are there any questions that you have? I am no expert to the US health system on medical insurance by any means, but I will certainly try and answer your questions. Thanks for watching.